Hello guys and welcome to episode 9 of my Total War 3 Kingdoms 8 Princes playthrough playing as Sema Leong on very hard difficulty. Today we are going to be continuing our war with Fan Guan. Previously we took Kang Wu from them but we need more in order to force them to become our vassal and once they are that will further increase our influence in the south which is nice. Uh, then we need to choose who we're attacking next, and it will mo most likely be Sir Ma Yu. Uh, we are moving Sir Ma Leong in his direction to potentially hit the Yangshu farmland. Uh, I'm probably going to try and ravage through his lands in order to make him a vassal as well at some point. So that's what we're going to be trying to go for. And at the moment, we're in a pretty decent position. We're centralized, we've got lots of vassals hanging around us, and we've got our coalition to the south. So really nice. Uh, let's go into our armies. Uh, we have Sir Ma Zhu, who is going to be attacking Zhu Yan, but can't yet because we have recently broken treaties with them. So we can just chill. Uh, we don't have anywhere we can spend money. I don't want to spend money on Kang Wu just because it's not going to be ours for long. I'm probably going to give it back to Fan Guan. So... Yeah. That's it. Everything's done for the turn. We'll move on. Let us talk trade. Sir Ma Wei is requesting that we both declare war on Sir Ma Lun. Sir Ma Lun is on his own, just north of the Jin Empire. The Jin Empire would really like this, so I am very tempted. Although everybody else would not like it. Oh, most of my vassals wouldn't like me at all. But they're all relatively happy with me already. I think that's okay. Ooh, actually, maybe not. Do we have a non aggression pact? As you wish. We might have a non aggression pact. That would be a bad idea. Otherwise, it would be a very good idea, because I do want to get friendly relations with the Jin Empire so that I can potentially become regent just because. And there's a chance when we get to a high level that that occurs. Exquisite weapon. Let's see what we got. Martial G. Is that it? <laughs> Philanthropic trait acquired for Sir Ma Bang. People of Merit. Let's have a look at those. Huang Feng Li. Disciplinary and resourceful and understanding. Oh, pretty nice. Level 4. We'll take her. Zheng Yang Sheng. Bright understanding and philanthropic. Welcome aboard. <laughs> And finally, Sen Yilu, he's disloyal, so that's a no. Wonderful. Now, we already do have issues with satisfaction throughout our faction, but in general, I think we're okay. I can fix a couple of them as soon as I get my prestige up. But at the moment, my prestige is taking its sweet time. Not far off though. Uh, if we take a few settlements actually from Fan Guan, then we'll actually be in a decent position. Right, we're going to head straight down to Fan Guan's main territory, uh, his capital, and take that from him. So let's jump into March Dance. We'll run down there. Hopefully, we can take that soon. No one defending it. So, uh, uh, we can. Possibly push him up. Ah, oh, it's so annoying. Then nothing we can give him here that gives him more satisfaction. Got minus 54 from Desire's higher core position. And minus 10% or 10 from competition for the throne. It costs 5,000 to do that. <laughs> Is it worth it? 
sure. We'll do it. We get 9,666 in the next turn. What? That's a crazy number. Our economy is nuts and we barely earn, own any land. This is glorious. All our tribute coming in from all our vassals. Alright, let's uh, check if we get any penalties this turn. For Zhu Yan and attacking him. What is the agenda? Yep, we got four turns left of that. Okay. Let's move on. We would be no threat to you. On aggression pact with Sir Ma Yong. I think that's okay. Well the Jin Empire wouldn't like it. Hmm. I do want to do everything in my possibility to make the Jin Empire happy, so yeah, we're gonna decline that. This will please you as it has us. Well, we can acknowledge that. They want to join our coalition. Very well. <laughs> That's crazy. I do like how the Jin Empire faction is a lot more, I don't know, autonomous than, say, like the Han Empire was in the first campaign. Because the Han Empire was just like, just a punching bag, honestly. Whereas at least the Jin Empire kind of stands for something in this one. They have a lot of seriously upgraded settlements. They're very strong. Right, Sema Li Shi has been born. Sema Yang. Got a stone rat. People of merit. Cool. Let's have a look. Chang Peng Zhu. Greedy, clumsy, and populist. No thank you. Strong. No thank you. <laughs> Cheerful, sincere, and greedy. No, thank you. Right. So, Sama Liang heading over to Sama Yu. Um, he's chilling. And can we attack Kang Wu? We are just out of range, maybe? Or are we in range? Oh, perfect. Perfect. Let's take that. Thank you very much. There we go. Power increases. Grand Prince. Lovely. You are amongst the most prominent of the princes. None could doubt that you would make a fine regent. You could seek to claim the title by force and march armies into the imperial capital, or you could prove yourself a worthy and dependable friend of the Jin, and perhaps find the role offered to you winningly. So that's what we're going to kind of try and do. I'm not sure if it's going to work. If it doesn't, then we can quite simply <laughs> just kill everyone. It's fine. <laughs> I don't mind doing it that way. Right. Um, we're going to offer this land back to Fang Guan. And um, he will become a vassal most likely. So I have three slots here, which can sort out a lot of issues. So this guy is definitely becoming one of my guys. Maybe he could become my excellency. I think I was going to give Sema Xiong the Grand Commandant. Because he's pretty low. I think that's what I was going to do. And then this guy could probably be... An administrator. He does have creative and defiant, which is fine. Or I could input one of the new ones. I haven't actually had a look at uh, what traits these have. Let's have a look. She's happy. Uh, what about this one? She has intensity, perception, zeal. I mean, this is all okay, actually. She has this as well. I mean, for a... Uh, for a administrator, you probably want these ones. The one that gives the extra bonuses for administered commandery. This one's the same, actually. Whereas this guy, he's kitted out properly, so... Yeah, we'll make him the new administrator, for sure. And then we'll make the other two in our court, so yeah, he can be the Excellency. And he can be the Commandant. Good. 
Uh, then we're going to make him the administrator. I just need to figure out which province needs administrating, though. <laughs> Let's have a look. So, Nanyang, does that not have an administrator? Doesn't look like it. No, Shangyang does, and which one's the other one? Shangyong. So Shangyong's fine, Shangyang's fine. So I guess we just put him in Nanyang. I think that would actually work out perfectly anyway. Yeah. Okay, cool. Congratulations. And you can sort out Nanyang. Okay, cool. That's that sorted. That sorts out satisfaction in a lot of ways. Like, he loves us now, and Sir Marchong does as well. So that means our army's no longer going to run away on us. <laughs> I was a little bit worried at some point. We'd have a turn where it went red at the end of the turn, and then, like, the, the army just disappeared. It was just like, I'm out. <laughs> right. Zhuo, Min. Uh, we're going to go to Nobility, maybe. What's the purpose of this lady at the moment? She's currently collecting from Peasantry. So she's an assignee. I don't think there's any other good assignment things that we can pick up. So we may as well just give her stuff that's good for herself. Maybe you give her the extra zeal. I yeah, will do that. All right. Um, let's see what we need to build because all of our buildings are finished. I think I was going to focus on food, wasn't I? Because I was upgrading a lot of settlements to get prestige, but it seems as though our food's okay for now. I might still upgrade it regardless. Because that does go from 100% to 150%, and it only costs 1,500, so worth it, for sure. Here, I'm just going to upgrade that again. Uh, I might upgrade this one again as well. But first of all, I think we're going to upgrade the food. Actually, that one's upgrading to the income from peasantry because we have the lumber yard, so that's fine. Uh, Jingling... This one's definitely needing to be upgraded for food. And we can upgrade that as well. Actually, let's upgrade the main settlement here at Bar. Okay, perfect. So we're focusing on food and we're focusing on upgrading our settlements. Because in order to get our prestige higher, like Imperial Prince, for example, we're going to have to just focus on building like really tall, getting our settlement administration buildings like maxed out. I'm going to want to max out my judiciaries in places as well. Does that actually give us prestige? No, it just gives us the actual vassal tri tribute and jurisdiction. So, do we get a chance? Yeah, we do. Okay, achieving this rank will give you a small chance each turn of being offered the regency. Um, next rank will give us a larger chance of being offered the Regency. And it unlocks the option of diplomatically annexing the Jin Empire. If it is your vassal. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so if they become your vassal, you can diplomatically annex them? <laughs> that would be nuts. Alright, well. Guess we got to continue raising our relations with the Jin Gen Empire. So let's try and offer them some money or something. See how much money we need to offer them in order for them to like us a bit more. Uh, we will make a payment. Uh, we'll go to max. That won't make a difference. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think we're going to have to give them a lot more money than that in order to get some diplomatic benefit from it. 
move on to the next term. An exchange, perhaps. So Ma Jong would like a trade agreement. That's fine. Oh, the other thing I needed to do, which I completely forgot, uh, was offer Fan Guan a peace treaty. But never mind. Uh, where's Sa Ma Jong? He's over here. What's that even worth? 586? Sure, why not? A productive meeting. Thank you. We want to keep our trade agreements maxed out. I think we got another trade agreement because we leveled up. Right, let's talk to Fang Guan and uh, see if we can peace out of him. Oh, he just formed a coalition, so he might not. Hmm. Kind of awkward. Alright, say hi. Why must we speak? Do you want peace, mate? Yes, you do. Request cooperation. And in order to make that work, we will trade back your territory. So, the Kangwu large city. And the rice paddy. And we will request a regular payment of much as you can give. Is that it? Really? Uh, how much money do you have on you? Let's check that. Nah, it's worth doing that over anything else. Maybe we could get them to give us food. We are actually getting a lot of food from Kang Wu, aren't we? Just thought about that. Oh well, that's fine for now. Uh, they will become our vassal. Your terms are acceptable. Wonderful. And I assume we're going to have to that will auto peace out with whoever else they're at war with. Right now we can do the same to these guys, Gu Zhen. Uh, I don't think anyone will care if we attack them. Speak quickly. Nope. Fang Guan would not like it, but he's our vassal now, so he can stuff it. Uh, let's go ahead and move towards uh, the Yulin large town. Nope. Does that drop our level again of prestige? No. Well, it does drop our prestige, but we've already got the Grand Prince rank, so we can't drop back down. Yeah, we get the extra trade agreement, which is nice. Which we've already filled up. So we're getting 11k per turn. Beautiful. Right, we must be pretty close to attacking Xu Yan now. Let's have a look. Probably like one more turn, I think. You have a proposal. Unless I've lost count. Two more turns. Okay, definitely lost count. <laughs> We've got 14k to spend, nothing to spend it on. That's always nice. Let's end the turn. We should join as one. Uh, she can. Fine, it's gonna Your fail anyway. That's gonna reject. We withdraw it then. <laughs> the guarantee of autonomy. He does offer me more, slightly more every time, I think. all these vassals. Oh, it's beautiful. Battlefield Medicine has been completed. Wonderful. I think that gives us the extra replenishment, doesn't it? And we're down to three food. Now, that's going to be pretty rough when we get to winter. Uh, we're only in spring. Uh, we are, however, building up more food buildings, so hopefully it will <laughs> go up significantly soon. Uh, for those who fall in the service of their lord, the battlefield need not be their grave. The work of the renowned Hua Tuo uh, produced myriad poultices and methods like acupuncture to aid recovery for both the common man and the warrior alike. Sensitive information. Loose-lipped courtier has told you of an indiscretion committed by a friend of theirs in another faction. This information could be used for extortion, but your courtier would be deeply upset at the breach of trust. Uh, we will respect their wishes for the spiritual alignment, I think. We do want to keep pushing that. 
because we want to get past the negative penalties of corruption. The maximum level, I think, removes it, because it does say the maximum level of this alignment has no negative effects. I actually haven't ever checked that myself personally, but <laughs> there we go. <laughs> right, more people of merit. I'm not sure I need any more people of merit, but I am just going to check them. Charismatic, stern, and vigilant. The charismatic's too bad. Wreck this fire in lumbering. That's a no. This guy is patient, arrogant, and selfless. That's a no. Alright, we can get the third tier of stuff now, which is really nice. Probably want to go for the minus 5% corruption, first of all, with the impartial governance. That gives extra faction support faction wide as well. Extra available administrative positions. Hmm. Very nice. Okay. So that'll do well. That will drop our corruption all over the place. It will probably go down to like 1% in administered commanderies. Uh, how long until we can declare war on Sermayu? Because Sermayu, we were at war with previously. Uh, but we pieced out with him. So Greetings. there is going to be a bit of downtime. It's probably the four turns actually. Yeah. I think it's four turns until we can declare. So, Sir Liang is just going to be chilling there. I might make a second army that will accompany him into that fight, but not for now, because there's no point. Uh, the other thing I need to do is uh, keep building up the food production, so let's go ahead and do that. We've already got as much food as we can there. What would be the last thing to put in this slot? I think we're going to go for the judiciary. That would be the best thing, I think. We can push our jurisdiction all the way to extreme and supreme and here I do want to upgrade this but these upgrades are going to be so important this one especially actually getting that upgraded is going to be more important than this okay well anyway Need to get those food buildings done. Um, here, are we going to declare war? I might just jump onto the water for now and travel towards the Yulin trade port. That would be an easier thing to attack, I think, than the large town. I need to be careful with that army, because if it gets defeated, then we're in a pretty bad spot. Though my eye is <laughs> just busy like colonizing all of this southern land. I wonder if at any point we could a joy to see ask him to be our vassal. That's not going to happen. All right. We got six out of six trade agreements. We got all these vassals. Uh, let's go through the quick deals and see if there's anything we can do. Uh, seek cooperation is the one, <laughs> not become vassal. We don't want to become vassal of someone else. On aggression packs. Uh, we probably don't want non aggression packs with any of these people. Maybe Semai Yong? Didn't we already get a non aggression pack with him? Oh no, I declined it because the Emperor wouldn't have liked it. Oh, okay. Uh, this lady is not too happy. Uh, we can actually make her an administrator. That is fine. She's got a lack of purpose. Oh, we do have extra assignments. I remember seeing this before and completely forgetting about it. Uh, so we do need to do that. So we can make her go on an assignment, probably. Lurupai. Uh, probably industrial exploitation, right? Oh, wow. Okay. That's pretty bad. Hmm. I guess I'm going to have to send her on one anyway. Or I could just promote her for the time being. Oh, no, it's Quang anyway. 
but yeah, she has industrial exploitation. That's fine. Okay, cool. Phew. <laughs> I was thinking of the wrong person. Um, we need to find somewhere that has a lot of industry then. Probably Nanyang. Uh, is there already industrial exploitation here? I don't think there is. I think that's a lot of industry. That's 800. Oh, Zhengyang is uh, 1.1k industry income. Okay, so we'll do Zhengyang. Um... Oh no, it was... I'm, I'm confusing myself massively here. Yeah, we're going to have to promote this lady anyway. I don't think the assignment will increase her satisfaction. We'll give it a go. Let's have a look. It'll get rid of the lack of purpose at least. We'll do that for now, just to make sure she doesn't leave. She's kind of useless at the moment. Um, I might actually get rid of her. She is kind, resourceful, and fraternal. But... I don't think it's worth keeping her about, because I don't need her. And the next army is probably going to be... Uh, we'll put Zhang Yangchang in. We'll put Sema Bang... And probably this guy, Sermaji. Why do I have Sermaji? Maybe we picked him up early on thinking he was alright, but right now I'm looking at him and he's not that good. Unless he's our son. <laughs> Is he our son? I'm just like talking shit about our son. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I guess I could dismiss him, just because he's shit, but... <laughs> he likes us because of uh, being in the family anyway. <laughs> That's funny. Alright. So, yeah, Sema Bang. I need another... Another one of these guys, honestly. Another Commandant. Commander. Or champion, even. Wow. Okay. Um, yeah, Sema Bang will lead the army. That's fine. That should sort out his lack of purpose as well. I think his traits are okay for that. He's got the morale when attacking and uh, when in enemy territory as well. So we get plus 20 morale with him if he leads the army, which is nice. Just gotta find somebody who can go with him. Maybe Lulian Shi. Ah, uh, she's an assignment person. Yeah, I'm not sure. Is Chang Pengshu really that bad? Yeah, he is. Okay. <laughs> we don't really have many options here. I feel like I'm gonna have to bring one of these two. Either Lu Lu Pai. I guess, actually, that might solve a problem with the lack of purpose. Perfect. Alright, I think I'm going to start building this army now anyway, because it's not going to be long until we attack Sema Yu, and I want it to be ready as soon as we can. So, we'll build Sema Bang. Uh, Shang Yan Chang and Lu Lu Pai. Okay. I wish I'd done that the other way around. Oh, well. The reason I say that is just OCD. I always like having the strategist on the right. I guess what we could do is uh, appoint them commanding general. We can juggle this around. There we go. <laughs> that sorts it out. And we're going to kick this out big time. So, we want archers, we want crossbows, and then we want those. For this lady, we're just going to have probably six units of Imperial Guard. 
And then for this guy, we're going to have Cataphrax. Is there any reason to have anything else? Probably not. I might have a couple of units of G Militia, and the rest will just be Cataphrax. Wow, they cost a lot of money. 2,880? Wow. That's something. Okay, well, <laughs> that's that. I think it's at least one more turn until we can attack Xu Yan anyway. Let's move on. I think I'm just getting confused because I'm spending like so long on each turn. I keep thinking I'm, I'm ending more turns than I am. But there is a surprising amount of stuff to do, even though we're Some not very big. Our Ren is requesting a war on Shi Khan. We're not going to do that right now. Thank you very much. Perhaps next time. Yeah, the Jin Empire signed a peace treaty with Sir Yan and a friend in need. Nice. All right, let's pull these out, and uh, we need to add a new one. Great. So that's Serma Bang sorted. We'll just leave him where he is for the replenishment, which is good. Uh, who's been wounded? Serma Yang. Why has he been wounded? Was that to do with that event? He's become maimed as well. I guess it doesn't matter because he's a strategist, but... It's a bit random. Did I click off the message? <laughs> okay, well, anyway. He's got a time, turn to recover regardless. Uh, let's just double check this. I think it's still one more turn, honestly. But it's worth checking. Let us approach our problems calm. You have made Ooh, a okay. cunning fall. There we go. <laughs> Boom. And we're off. Okay, we can hit the Silk Trader, like, immediately. He has just made a second army, though. We're just gonna go straight in. Oh, that's gonna be tough. That is a tough old battle. Wow. Look how many range forces they have in the garrison. Well, I'm hoping if we win this, we can just vassalize straight away. So what we're going to do is just start the battle. We've been planning this attack for so long that I'm not going to wait for a second army to arrive. I'm just not. Is this what a silk trader looks like? Or have I attacked an encampment? <laughs> I think this is just a silk trader, isn't it? Well, either way, they're nicely compacted, which is good, because it means my trebuchet is going to get lots of kills. And the towers are sufficiently spaced out, which is really nice. I might attack from this side, because um, they're... The, the hill here kind of stops my trebuchet from attacking from the start, so... Okay, we're gonna start over here. And we'll move the trebuchets forward so they're more, more accurate. We don't want them to be in range of the towers, so we'll move them back just slightly. Cool. Uh, let's stop them. Otherwise they'll just fire at will. That is a lot of troops. First things first. 
Archers. Oh dear. Well, I guess we're taking down these towers. That's annoying. I'm going to use up a lot of ammunition on these towers. We don't have flaming ammunition on the archers, so <laughs> it's really awkward. Can we really just kill that, please? I'm going to put flaming rounds on, just because that way we might set alight the whole settlement, which would be nice. Okay, well, that is now gone. So, let's target the Saber Infantry here. We're going to put these guys into turtle formation, and we're going to move on in. I've just got to do as much damage as I can to their infantry units because their ranged units can waste their ammunition on my turtle formations. Mm, that was some really good hits. It may, however, be worth saving some ammunition for when my infantry engages on the front, because if they all start piling round, then we can probably hit them in this area. Also, I can move my trebuchets forwards now, so I may as well, because the towers are gone. At some point, I am going to have to find a way to use my cavalry, because otherwise we're going to be quite underpowered in comparison. Uh, the Imperial Guards take in a lot of fire there, but they should be okay. Good to see that the flames are spreading. That's what we like to see. And the main thing is, don't be in range of the crossbows. I'm just going to move them back slightly. Although they do seem content at firing at my Imperial Guard. The garrison shouldn't have that much ammunition, so we should be able to use it up quite well. Right, let's get my generals forwards. I should have done this already, honestly. And we don't have any decent weapon. They have a war blade. She just has a Jeanne. We might be able to beat her. I'm just keeping my archers back for the time being. I could probably move my crossbows and stuff forwards though. We'll start doing that, but I'm going to turn them off fire well. I'm going to have my leaders attack their leaders. That is fine. Okay, let's move up another one. It looks really cool as they like come out like that. They push forwards and spread out. 
have a couple move up behind. Oh, he's taking a lot of damage. Ouch. I'm gonna have her close so that I can get this stone bul stone bulwark back ASAP. I don't want him in melee. Well, that fire is spreading around the entire encampment. We've even taken out that tower. Having flaming arrows would have been really useful. Alright, let's fire over this engagement. I'm not sure if this is going to work, but we'll give it a go. This was the intention. Our first unit of infantry is pretty much destroyed anyway. I just need to find a unit that's like at the back. I'm not sure your range block chance is going to help you versus my artillery. <laughs> Alright. Go on, son. Show him how it's done. Oh, they're coming round to attack us. Alright. Let's just attack that unit in the open. I should probably have my archers kill their crossbows and stuff. Because they're still going to be able to fight us in melee. And since we're not being fired up there, I'm going to bring them out of the uh, turtle formation. That way they get their melee attack rate back. We should be able to kill these G militia quite quickly. Nice, we've routed their general. Ooh, need to move these back. No point in letting them be attacked by the tower. I think we're getting a relatively good amount of damage in there. There are better targets though, so I'll stop them firing for now. Alright, so their leaders are doing quite a lot of work, but I should be able to kill them just like I have with Xiong Jinning here. The main thing I'm worried about is they still have a lot of archers that have ammunition. That's not good at all. Alright, let's just throw some bolts onto the crossbowman and arch captain. And we'll also attack the arch militia there. Actually, let's attack the, the saber militia more specifically. And I'll also attack those crossbowmen. So I just want to chunk big units that are easy to hit. And also, because these are garrison units, they're not going to use loose formation. So easy kills. Because eventually we are going to have to kill all of these guys. 
So it's best we do so with the arrows, which is the easiest way by far. Oh, my leader ran away. Okay. Right, now that they've made them route, that's fine. Just target the arch captain there. And also target the Sabre infantry. May as well kill those arch militia. Anything that routes, I'll just stop firing at. Okay, good. Alright, that'll do for those. Attack those arch militia instead. I'm gonna move this unit forwards right to the wall so that we can start making the other arch militia attack us. Alright, since those guys are moving, I'm gonna stop firing and I'm gonna actually start targeting the Saber militia at this tower. Okay, good. We're going to try and chunk these Sabre Infantry as much as we can. Lovely hits coming in. Oh, we've broken that unit, we can get our Strategist back into position. Okay, so there is only one unit after that that's not firing yet. I'm just trying to, yeah, there we go, move them into range. They can stand there and take that. I might also move my leader over here. Actually, no, I can't do that because otherwise I'll stop firing at them. Yeah, I'd like to give them the 100% range block chance, but that would actually be detrimental to what I'm trying to do. We're not going to bother doing that. We will attack the Sabre Infantry here. And we'll use these crossbowmen to attack those Sabre Militia. I want those to attack those archers to kill some of those. Alright, let's attack the same militia. Good. Oh, those have actually run out of ammunition. Let's move the archers over. These crossbows do have a lot of ammunition left though. Hopefully we can do a decent amount of damage. It depends what way they're facing. Uh, looks like they're facing the right direction. We need to hit ones that aren't, like these guys. That would be a better target. Also, there's more collateral there, so... Seems like a better shout. Yeah, you can see they die a lot quicker because we're basically shooting them in the back. Rather than letting them use their... Shield bonus. I'm going to hit those Arch Militia. My leader just straight up left. He's gone. I think another one of my Imperial Guard units went as well. Alright, so I'm moving up my G Infantry. Move up my Cav as well. Okay, nice. We're making those route. Let's hit the G Militia. We're going to hit those Saber Militia now. And we'll hit those Arch Militia. Right, let's charge forwards here. And I'm going to attack their leader. I think it's just time to go all in. 
get a big old engagement going. You're saying that we still have our trebuchets. Maybe I just stop that for a sec. Let the trebuchets fire into that engagement. Oh, our leader's getting very low. Mm, can they not get decent shots? It's annoying. Come on, surely they can shoot at these guys. I just want one big old volley going in here. There we go. A lot of these units are just straight up running now. Okay, we'll fire at the ones further back. Because this is ridiculous. Was that they were going to offer a duel? Sounded like the duel thing going on. Actually, one thing we could do with that calf is use them to wreck their leader here. Attack the same militia. A lot of the units are just running away now. I think our cavalry is doing an okay job. Just need them to focus it down. And they will surround the nice amount of damage coming down from each unit. And then just all the Imperial Guard fighting into the settlement. Beautiful. I'm going to move these guys back. And then we'll have them fire over the top. Oh, those trebuchets. We'll get them to finish off the Saber Militia there. They can. Let's get some shots in there. Oh, that was the last volley. Okay. Well, <laughs> the sentinels are very dead, I think. I might kill a few more of my horses, but she is surrounded. Let's boost the morale of our units. Well, there she goes. And now what I'm going to do is bring my cavalry around through this area where the, there's only one tower. And uh, we'll try and charge into the back of them. Although, I think that's a chain route. Yep. Alright, job done. Well, that was pretty much a heroic victory, I think. <laughs> oh, no, just a close victory. <laughs> Never mind. We were against the odds Your there. Massively. to you their requests. A list of assignments they strongly recommend you pursue. But we managed to make it work. 
3,200 versus 5,000. She's clever, defiant, modest, and philanthropic. Uh, we're actually going to release her because I want to increase relations with the guy we're attacking. Uh, so that's fine. Uh, we'll occupy that. And what we're going to do is say hello to him. Be like, yo, Ju Yan, would you like your land back? A waste of time. Peace. West Corporation. Okay. Uh, do we give him his territory back? <laughs> that is the question. I guess we do. Because he does own the entire commandery, so we may as well. Uh, the only trouble is, will he be able to give us <laughs> enough back for it? <laughs> um, let's see. We do. We don't actually want this. <laughs> but what can we take? Will we just like we can just drain him dry. Unless we request his main city. This could be another one of our commanderies. Let me think about that. So if we did that, what would it give us? We give we get a level five silk trader, the Grand Silk Road market, and we get the main settlement. I think that's food, so that would cancel out the small city a little bit in the copper mine. I wonder if he'd give me all of this and just keep the horse pastures. Because we're still focused domain. So, I think we can get away with doing that. Actually, I think someone else owns this, doesn't they? Oh, that's the Jin Empire. Yeah, okay, never mind. Yeah, so if we ask for his main settlement, I think that's fine. Our patience we'll give you thin. peace if you become a vassal and you also give us the Wudu small city. I won't let us do that. Okay, never mind then. I'm guessing it's because it's his capital, but we could force his capital onto the horse pastures quite easily. Hmm. I mean, how would the public order be here? Because keeping this isn't necessarily a bad idea. Like, it's an extra 250 income, 15 prestige, um, the 65% income from Silk. Got a big old garrison. Once the faction supports in our favor, I think we'll even have positive public order. I, I guess what I could do for now is peace out with him without giving it back. And then what we can do in future, if the public order is a problem, give it back to him. But let's do that. Our patience so is peace, good. request cooperation. We want money, we want payment, so we can get 500 term from him and a payment of 500. They will cooperate with us and we give them peace. That'll do and people will like us for doing that. A reasonable offer. Perfect. Alright, so they're our vassal as well now. So that is all of the east under our control. Wonderful. And we get a little bit extra income from the silk trader. Okay. Unfortunately, guys, it has been my time. So I am going to leave it here. We did just get a black stallion, that's cool. I might quickly equip that before I forget. We'll give that to my new lady. There you go. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Next time around, we'll be attacking Gujen. And we'll move on to Jikan after that and just vassalize the south. Then that'll be all of the south sorted. And we just got to go northwest. Northeast, sorry. I just got my directions completely messed up, didn't I? 
Yeah. So this is northeast. <laughs> this is northwest. We got on the entirety of the west that's sorted out. Apologies. Next time round, uh, we will attack Sermar Yu. And uh, yeah, lots to look forward to. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Okay,